Our study includes 25 piping plover nests, ranging from Barnegat Light in the north to Stone Harbor Point in the south. All of our work is in the field and involves hot and muddy conditions with many biting insects. Sometimes we'll ride to study sites in a truck or boat. Most of the time we just walk. Piping plovers like to nest on open sandy beaches. They lay their eggs in a small depression called a scrape. This leaves them vulnerable to predation, so nests are often enclosed in fencing, large enough that the adults can walk through, but small enough that predators cannot. An important aspect of this study is to understand the survivorship of the birds. To calculate this, we need a way to identify individuals within the population. We begin by surrounding the enclosure with chicken wire, which is small enough the plovers cannot get through. We leave an entrance and an exit. At the exit, we attach a mesh funnel. Then we hide and wait for the parents to return. So I'm sitting on the side of the road, waiting to get the call to charge the nest so we can catch the adults here at Malibu. We charge the nest to push the plover into the mesh funnel. This female initially tries to fly up, but is hit back down. Next, she tries to escape through the holes in the fencing, but encounters the chicken wire. She pokes around, unable to escape, until she finds the exit we left into the funnel. Now, we can carefully take her out. We need to be very fast and safe, as we are limited to a maximum of 30 minutes to prevent the eggs from being unattended to for a long period of time. Four color bands are put on her legs, which lets us identify the individual bird. Throughout the season, we conduct resighting surveys of the banded birds, which allows us to calculate adult survivorship. All right. this is good. Once we are done processing her, we release her back to attend her nest. We also want to understand the survival of the chicks, so we catch and ban them as well. Chicks leave the nest bowl very soon after hatching, and as a result, we cannot catch them the way we did the adults. Rather, we catch them by hand. We need to be very careful not to inadvertently injure a chick in the process. Sometimes, we use pillowcases and shirts to help us catch them. <laughs> we want to relate chick survival to body condition, so we take a series of measurements each time we catch the chicks. By repeating this every five days, we can calculate their growth rates. For black white, Coleman is 10.59. Tarsus for black white is 23.2. We are also using radio telemetry to track the plovers. We attach nano tags to the chicks and adults to understand which predators pose the greatest threats. If a chick or adult with a transmitter is taken, we can follow the signal to find its remains and determine the type of predator that ate it. As sad as this sounds, it is important information that we need to know in order to better protect the species. For the chicks that survive, we can use the transmitters to understand the post-fledging movements. While the odds may be stacked against this tiny bird, there is a group of dedicated and inspiring people who are determined to save the piping plover.